Laurentius the Pyromancer. Who is he really? We know him as the friend to all adventurers, the coolest guy with the coolest voice, a big hit with the ladies, and perhaps our favourite NPC. But has this best boy of Dark Souls had enough attention from the community? Laurentius is such a kind character that the community has never examined him closely. Everyone likes this neighbourhood pyromancer so much that he has never had a dedicated video. Laurentius deserves justice, so let's bring him closer to the light of the bonfire and see what we discover. Laurentius, the Lad We can piece his story together from descriptions and dialogue. Laurentius himself is quite talkative about his past. He doesn't say if he was born in the Great Swamp, but he clearly states that it's now his home. He speaks very warmly of the place. My home, the Great Swamp, is an abundant store of nature. Laurentius was a pyromancer before he came to Laudrum. In fact, he was the student of an old master. My teacher, whom I imagine still resides in the Great Swamp, had a funny way of putting it. He said that pyromancy is the ultimate fantasy. We are born in the dark and warmed by fire, but this fire we cannot touch. Those whose fascination with fire persists learn to hold it in their own hand. He rather had a way with words, the old withering frog. But it's very possible that this wasn't just any teacher. Laurentius possesses some pyromancies of Carmina. It is very likely that the art of modern pyromancy, which originated from Isolith and her daughters, has been passed down from Quelana to Salomon 200 years ago, and then to Carmina. Laurentius possesses two of Carmina's unique spells, Iron Flash and Flash Sweat. The name Carmina is probably female, and Laurentius refers to his teacher as male, but because this game is Japanese, we cannot be certain that Carmina is being used as a name for a woman. Could Carmina be Laurentius' teacher? What is most likely, considering the years that have passed, is that the withered old frog is one of the students of Carmina. This is highly probable, as the spells of Carmina seem to have been developed independently, and are not known to most pyromancers. So Laurentius enjoyed his home and appreciated his teacher, but his blessed life took a turn. One day, and we don't know how it happened, he became undead. Laurentius as an undead would have to say goodbye to his home and his teacher. Laurentius was stoic, however. Perhaps more than those things, Laurentius loved pyromancy. Laurentius didn't see becoming undead as a curse, because the undead go to the land of the ancient gods. In this land, pyromancers earn a certain respect. The Witch of Isolith, one of the legendary lords, is the godmother of pyromancy. So the day I became undead, I was ecstatic. I felt as if I'd been chosen to attune myself to the ancient arts. Now he could explore this strange world, questing to advance his flame arts, to make his mark upon the great history of pyromancy. And this is where we meet Laurentius. Before we meet him, his journey through the world of Laudron is not as wonderful as he expected. Of course, it wasn't all that romantic in the end. It is a cruel and empty world. The great swamp, full of nature, was inviting compared to Laudron, which is austere and dangerous. Most of its inhabitants are crazy, and fellow pyromancers are almost impossible to find. We don't know how long Laurentius adventured before we find him, but without us, his adventure would have come to an end. We come across him in the depths, on the way to Blighttown, and we hear his unforgettable voice for the first time, panicking. He is begging for help with an imploring tone, almost like a child. You, yeah, yes, you, here, over, over here. Please, you must help me. Oh, you, you, there you are. You must help me. Break the urn, or else... She'll have me for lunch. You're my only hope. Oh, please. We can guess that he was searching for the ancient pyromancers. After all, he is on the road to their home. But he gets stuck with a butcher. These circumstances are difficult to explain away. He is trapped by a woman who thought he looked good enough to eat. But his history is not our concern, and we don't ask him any questions. We free him with care. Do not use your sword, your axe, or any weapon. This is very important, even if 98% of you have already completed the game. Take care with Laurentius. Roll into the barrels, please. After we free him, he immediately expresses gratitude. Th thank you. I would have been a supper without you. Been eaten alive, I shudder to think. 
Thank you. Thank you dearly. I am Laurentius. Or the Great Swamp. I will not forget my debt to you. His voice is so charming. Just hearing his thanks felt like the debt was paid. If we ask him if he can make it home, or to safety, he reassures us. Oh, hello there. I'm fine, thanks to you. Later, probably after we have defeated the demon, Quelag, we find him back at the warm and familiar Firelink Shrine. He confidently explains how he managed to make it there. Well, I see you made it out. Yeah, I, I made it out safely too. I have my Pyromancy of the Great Swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. Our Pyromancer has set up in a comfortable spot and immediately shows us he wants to be friends. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I can share my spells with you. I think you have a knack for it, all you need are the materials. I'll be pleased to help you. His voice is even nicer than before, no longer shaken with panic. He wants to repay his debt and he starts to share his Pyromancy. First, he shares a flame. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Here, first take this. A flame from the Great Swamp. Now you're a fully fledged pyromancer. And then follow his teachings. Why, well, let's get started right now. Buffs, offensive spells, and explanations of what pyromancy is. Pyromancy is the art of casting fire. Produce flame, then channel it, just as our ancestors did. A pyromancer must be in tune with nature herself. You will understand one day, it only takes time. Everything he provides us is truly enlightening, but much more memorable to us than a merchant or a pyromancy teacher was the friend Laurentius becomes in-game. He cares about us sincerely, he looks out for us. Oh hello there, I'm pleased to see you safe. He trusts us. I definitely trust you. Any person should help another trapped in a barrel, and so should that debt be repaid, but Laurentius went much further. Goodbye then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go alone. Who could not like this man? And on top of that, the spells he shares are unbelievably powerful. Many of them were so game-breaking they needed to be nerfed, and even then they were still overpowered. Oh, to play with Iron Flesh in version 1.0. To be a pyromancer god, impervious to hit. Founded as the rock. Unshakable by Smoe! <clears throat> Throughout his warm and friendly company, he slowly upgrades our pyromancy flame, and also tells us more of the history of pyromancers. Pyromancy has a, well, rather primitive aspect to it. It messes poorly with advanced culture, and pyromancers are considered rather unsavoury, which is fine as I never got along with anybody anyway. So, for me, Turning undead didn't change a thing. <laughs> and this may be why he is so friendly. He wants us to like him because of a long history of rejection. Pyromancers and all those from the Great Swamp are outcasts, on the fringes, outcasts in a literal sense. Tattered Hood, part of the Pyromancer set, says, Hood worn by Pyromancers of the Great Swamp. Though it appears tattered, it is actually quite strong. Their attire offers substantial protection against poison, fire, and other forces of nature out in the hinterlands where they were driven. They were literally violently chased from society into the wilds of the Great Swamp. For Laurentius, there is always the shadow of rejection, the chance he might offend with his magic, that we will feel such revulsion we won't want to deal with him. Even when we attack him, which could be for any reason in Laudron, the most common being madness, his mind turns to embarrassment. Whoa, what are you doing? It is I, Laurentius. I've no bone to pick with you. Curse the efforts, are you mad? I owe my life to you. This is wrong, you were my friend. You detest my pyromancy, that must be it. Because while Laurentius seems cool, he actually possesses a great deal of doubt in himself. While he talks about not getting along with others or being on the fringes and that it makes no difference to him, he does care that we like him. He wants to be our friend. Being undead may have made no difference at first, but Laurentius likely misses his teacher, the old frog. And in Laudron, friends are hard to come by. You want to value them if you find one. Wait, friend, where, where are you off to? Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go alone. In any case, I definitely trust you. Apologies, my friend. This is wrong, you were my friend. Pyromancy is not regarded well in advanced culture. 
and Laurentius claims people haven't got along with him. But Laurentius is so damn nice, we don't think it can have been his fault. It must be hard to do everything right and still have people reject you because of your fire magic or because you call the Great Swamp your home. So, we become his friend, and as cool as he may seem, he values this a lot. He misses us when we are gone, and is happy when we remember him. Oh, hello there. I'm pleased to see you safe, as always. If you provide the materials, I can teach you pyromancy. Wait, friend, where, where are you off to? That was rather abrupt. You are an odd one. <laughs> Slowly, we progress with Laurentius. Until, one day, on our adventures, we meet a new teacher, Quelana. Are you too one who seeks my pyromancy? Very well. You shall be my pupil. With Quelana, we go even further than with Laurentius. After all, she was there in the early days of pyromancy, and Isolith has come far since. She teaches us techniques to conjure great firestorms and to weave whips of flame in the air, pyromancy which Laurentius could never dream of. And after we embark on this great adventure of learning, the quest of Laurentius's dreams, we return to the quiet Firelink Shrine, with Laurentius sitting in the same old position. Our friend welcomes us, and then notices something different. Oh, hello there. You've been a stranger these days. Why? What? What? What spectacular pyromancy? Tell me about it. I, I, I have never seen anything like it. This is Laurentius's dream the reason the world turned him undead. Do we tell him the truth and risk losing our friend? He nearly died on the way to Blighttown the last time, though he has helped us a great deal. But he has only stayed in Firelink, so has he actually grown stronger? Does his pyromancy flame burn more fiercely? Will he be safe if he actually pursues his quest? If we deny that our pyromancy is special, we hear in his voice that he knows it's not true. I see. I suppose I was mistaken. In any case, I definitely trust you. Apologies, my friend. Forget that I said anything. And yet, he trusts us. This is because, perhaps deep down, he knows we are doing it to save him from himself. But most of us will have told Laurentius on a blind first playthrough. It's hard to lie to our friend. Laurentius assures us that he is an able pyromancer, like every time before. I have my pyromancy of the Great Swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. Why, yes, of course. Thank you for sharing. I'm still an able pyromancer. I shall locate her myself. I'm in your debt once again. And this shows his insecurity goes further than in our friendship. He is worried that his pyromancy is not strong enough. He must have been embarrassed to be found trapped in a barrel, as a butcher's lunch. He must be embarrassed when his knowledge seems mundane to a fellow pyromancer. A pyromancer's flame is, is a part of his own body. The flame develops right along with his skill. Oh, sorry. You're a pyromancer yourself. You, you already know this. And in helping us progress, he must be concerned that he is stalling. Stalling. Stalling in firelink. I've decided to rest here for a while. It's not as if we'll be dying any time soon. Isn't his acceptance of our lie some proof of his mindset? I see. I suppose I was mistaken. And his bravado when we tell the truth, doesn't it betray nervousness? I'm still an able pyromancer. Laurentius continues in his dream, and though we love him, we know the ending. How did that raggedy old charm end up? You know, the one who idolized some godmother of pyromancy? He left for blight down, but never came back. Whereas most flee from sickness, he dives right in. Well, nothing will harm him once he goes hollow. At the bottom of Blight Town, we find him. His face is sunk in shadow, his body weakened. He has lost his mind in the ravages of this swamp far from home. He misses with his hand axe, stumbling in the mud. His pyromancy flame glows in his hand, the last, truest part of himself left. We end Laurentius's suffering. He deserves rest. Laurentius's tragedy was that he was right. He wasn't strong enough. Perhaps if he had been more selfish, he might have achieved his dream, but he wasn't. He spent his time being our friend and guide, and he ends with a weaker pyromancy flame than ours. 
both flames were of his body, but his kindness was such that ours advanced further. Laurentius searched the swamp, dying in its poison over and over, until it became too much. He must have walked past Quelana so many times, but his flame wasn't strong enough. Sadly, Laurentius wasn't gifted enough to see her. Hmm. A mere undead. Yet you can see me. Fascinating. I am Quelana of Isolith. I am not often revealed to walkers of flesh. You have a gift. He was, after all, not a master pyromancer, but simply a learner on the path. Perhaps if we left Laurentius to find his own way, he would reach Quelana with a stronger flame. Without our shortcut, perhaps he might have learnt and grown enough to see the great teacher of pyromancy himself. Laurentius may not have enough confidence under the surface, but he may not need it. The great Salomon was, in the beginning, bungling. Long ago, I accepted another pupil like yourself. Over 200 years ago, there was a man almost as bungling as you. In your world, he was called Salaman, the master pyromancer. The little rascal really made something of himself. Even if we lie to keep him safe, and he still does nothing with his time, he is always a hero to us. He never wants anything from us. He is genuine and full of respect, and just so damn cool. Dead or alive, he survives in our flame, because it's a part of him. When I gave you that flame, I gave you a part of myself. Please take good care of him. Ascended pyromancy flame, something Laurentius was yet to achieve, says, A flame is a precious thing indeed, to be nurtured, often for an entire lifetime. When the flame is shared, it creates an eternal bond between the parties. Laurentius, in his kindness, showed he knew the fundamental truth of flame, even if he didn't ascend. From first meeting him, to years later, we have only come to appreciate him more. Laurentius the Pyromancer did create an eternal bond. He is one of many things from Dark Souls that stays with us forever. Thank you. Thank you dearly.